Firstly, the ocean is a liquid, and as it warms, it expands, and sea level rises. This is exactly analogous to a thermometer. When the liquid in a thermometer warms, uh, it expands and rises up the column. The second reason is the addition of mass to the ocean. There's two or three main sources for this mass. Firstly, melting glaciers. These are glaciers in places like Alaska, Patagonia, the Himalayas, etc. The uh, atmosphere is warming and this causes sort of glaciers to melt and the meltwater essentially runs off into the ocean, increasing the mass of the ocean and leading to sea level rise. The ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica are also contributing to sea level rise, particularly over the last decade. The rise is not uniform, as we can see on this graph here. Uh, this is a global average rise during the 20th century, which has increased during that period, but the rise is not uniform. There's a larger rate of rise in the Western Pacific and a small rate of rise in the Eastern Pacific. Uh, indeed, the rate of rise in the Western Pacific and in the north of Australia is perhaps three, three times the global average rate of rise. This pattern is associated with changes in wind stress or the winds around the globe and is also reflected in the depth of ocean warming. Larger warming in the Western Pacific associated with increased easterly winds over this period. However, this pattern is not stable uh, it's associated with natural climate variations and we would expect it to evolve uh, during the 21st century. We measure sea level from tide gauges. This gives us local measurements of coastal sea level around Australia and in the Pacific Islands. This is done in conjunction with the Bureau of Meteorology and around Australia the network's called the Australian Baseline Sea Level Monitoring Network. We also want to have a, a view of how sea level is rising globally, so we have a better understanding of that. And we can do that uh, by using satellite altimeters. Uh, these are satellites which revolve uh, around the Earth, and they emit from a pulse of uh, a radar pulse, which travels from the satellite down to the ocean surface and back to the satellite. Uh, the time of flight measures the distance from the satellite to the surface and if we independently know the position of the satellite we can work out the position of the sea level. And this gives us global measurements and so we're working with uh, NASA to use their satellites uh, in CSIRO uh, to estimate global and regional sea level change. We can also use geological data these are principally uh, measurements taken from salt marshes where they take cores from the salt marsh and they can determine historical sea levels uh, back for hundreds of years and in a couple of cases back for almost 2,000 years. There's also archaeological indicators. Uh, for example, the Romans built fish tanks uh, which had to operate at sea level and we can determine the location of these fish tanks today compared to present day sea level.